Have you ever pondered the genetic bond that ties us to the vast tapestry of life on Earth? It's a question that has confounded scientists and laymen alike. Today, we delve into the fascinating world of genetics, comparing and contrasting the similarities and differences between humans and various species. Startlingly, Richard Sternberg, who has a PhD in evolutionary biology, once stated in a lecture on the human genome, basically the dolphin genome is almost wholly identical to the human genome, yet no one would argue that bottlenose dolphins are our sister species. This sentiment echoes a 2010 article titled Dolphin DNA Very Close to Human, where it is stated, the genetic makeup of dolphins is amazingly similar to humans. They're closer to us than cows, horses, or pigs, despite the fact that they live in the water. The extent of the genetic similarity came as a real surprise to us. In the same year, another article titled Frogs and Humans Are Kissing Cousins highlighted the unexpected genetic resemblance between frogs, mice, and humans. As was stated in the paper, what's the difference between a frog, a chicken, a mouse, and a human? Not as much as you'd think. What's most surprising, researchers say, is how closely the amphibian's genome resembles that of the mouse and the human. This discovery underscores the fact that many times genetic similarity simply does not align with morphological similarity, as was presupposed within the genetic reductionism and or selfish gene model of neo-Darwinism. In 2008, an article titled Kangaroo Genes Close to Humans, it is stated, Australia's kangaroos are genetically similar to humans. There are a few differences. We have a few more of this, a few less of that, but they are the same genes and a lot of them are in the same order. We thought they'd be completely scrambled, but they're not. There is great chunks of the human genome, which is sitting right there in the kangaroo genome. Moreover, a 2007 paper stated that placental and marsupial mammals have largely the same set of genes for making proteins, with most of the difference lying in the controls that turn genes on and off. This leaves us with an unanswered question. In a 2019 article titled, Between Sapientia and Scientia, James Lafanu states, Contrary to all expectations, many DNA sequences are remarkably similar across the vast spectrum of organismic complexity from a millimeter long worm to ourselves. There is in short nothing in the genomes of fly and man to explain why the fly should have six legs, a pair of wings, and a dot-sized brain and we should have two arms, two legs, and a mind capable of comprehending the overarching history of our universe. So just how do physical and behavioral differences arise if we have a very similar set of genes to that of the dolphin, frog, kangaroo, mouse, or chicken? According to a 2012 paper titled Evolution by Splicing, part of the answer lies in alternative splicing. This process causes alternative splicing patterns to differ widely between even closely related species. As was stated in the paper, Alternative splicing events differ widely between even closely related species. The alternative splicing patterns are very different even between humans and chimpanzees. This finding was reinforced in a 2016 paper titled Widespread Expansion of Protein Interaction Capabilities by Alternative Splicing, where it was stated, alternatively spliced isoforms appear to behave as if encoded by distinct genes rather than as minor variants of each other. As many as 100,000 distinct isoform transcripts could be produced from the 20,000 human protein coding genes, collectively leading to perhaps over a million distinct polypeptides obtained by post-translational modification of products of all possible transcript isoforms. To state the obvious, this finding of radically different and species-specific alternative splicing patterns is simply completely devastating to the gene-centric presuppositions of Darwinian evolution. In short, the non-protein coding regions between even the chimp and human genomes are species-specific and strikingly different. As Stephen Meyer explains, it has become increasingly clear that the non-coding regions, the crucial operating systems in effect, of the chimp and human genomes are species-specific. That is, they are strikingly different in the two species. I see nothing from a genetic point of view that challenges the idea that humans originated independently from primates. In conclusion, our surprising genetic similarity with various species, from dolphins to kangaroos to frogs, is far closer than was expected under Darwinian presuppositions, whereas alternative splicing patterns between species, 
between even chimps and humans are far more different and species-specific than was expected on Darwinian presuppositions. In short, none of this genetic evidence makes sense under the genetic reductionism and or selfish gene model of neo-Darwinism, but only makes sense under a intelligent design framework, a framework where each species was created independently.